Disclaimer, disclaimer, only do this for your deciduous trees, the trees that naturally have the leaves fall off every year. If you do it to your citrus, you will kill your tree. Don't do it to citrus. Only trees that have leaves that will naturally fall off. Stone fruit like plums, cherries, peaches, all of that stuff. Pome fruit like apples and, um, and pear. Or you could do it to figs. Just make sure that the leaves are things that fall off. Do not do it to subtropicals like citrus, avocado, um, mango, any of that subtropical stuff. Do not take any of the leaves off unless there's some other issue that you're dealing with. But you do not want to defoliate a tree that's citrus. You will kill it. Uh, in Southern California, we have a really warm climate and we're already like in the third week of January and these leaves are still on here. One big thing about fruit production in deciduous trees is that the trees be able to go into dormancy and if they don't, um, then those buds don't really harden up. Um, the fruit doesn't, those buds don't have a time to develop and then when it's time in a couple of months or a month for all these flowers to spring out, um, the tree hasn't had enough time to be asleep and just like us, when we don't have enough sleep, it wakes up kind of grumpy and doesn't do that great as far as fruit production goes. So um, one way that we can help uh, remind the tree that it's time to sleep is by if the leaves have already fallen off by this third week in January, then that is to manually remove the leaves. I've been going around and on the smaller trees, just been knocking some of the leaves off. Um, so there are a couple of ways to do this. One way we're going to do is by blasting it with uh, a bunch of high pressure water to knock off the leaves and then we'll come back and defoliate by hand. So we're going to give that a shot. What we want to do is try to knock off as many of these leaves as possible with this water so that way we don't have as many to mess with when we come back to do this by hand. Um, water is nice because it doesn't hit it like it would with a stick or something like that. The water hits the leaves and then dissipates. Um, something also to remember is that these leaves are, are they pop off in a certain direction and usually if the leaves are kind of ready-ish to come off you want them to they pop off if you pull down toward the base of the stem and they pop right off toward the base of the stem. Now, if your leaves are not quite ready to pop off or they don't, they seem like they're a little tough, uh, you want to be careful to not pull toward the stem because you can end up pulling off a ton of the bark. So take a look at your leaves. If they're popping off easily, going toward the trunk or toward the base of the stem, then that's fine. If not, then you will have to manually go by hand and pull them upward. Um, especially on these uh, stone fruit here. Okay, so we see we have a bunch of leaves here. This is actually a lot more bare than when we first started. Um, I might I might go through and blast, especially some of the little smaller ones, but it's nice. It's a nice warm day out here. The leaves are coming off. Uh, the tree's getting a bit of water. <laughs> and so this is, a, this is a cool way, kind of pretty efficient way to knock a bunch of these off. So what I was talking about earlier as far as the leaves going down in a certain direction, see how they're going toward the base of the stem? As I pull, they just kind of want to pop off. See it? without damaging these buds. You want to be sure that you're not damaging the buds as you're going or stripping the bark. Like some of these, again, if this was on like a, on my nectar plum, if I were to pull down like this, it would take a whole strip of, uh, take a strip of bark with it, which you want to avoid with this. So now that we've knocked off a lot of the leaves with water, I'm going to go through and manually uh, just knock off whatever leaves I see. So <laughs> this is going to be fairly quick work. We've got a lot of the leaves off and we're going to give it a shot. There are two other things to consider. One that I had forgotten about about this Santa Rosa plum is it has these sharp barbs on here that are essentially little spikes, um, <laughs> these little spurs. Another thing is that uh, while the leaves want to go in the direction, they most naturally pop off. Let me find one that's in the sun here. Um, while they naturally pop off going in that direction, when you're trying to get an entire stem of them, especially on something that's close like this, it's all right to give it some help and just go in the direction uh, pulling gently in the direction away from the stem, uh, the base of the stem. So as I'm going through here, I'm just kind of pulling these leaves away from the base of the stem. And if they're ready to come off, they'll pop right off. So um, yeah, that's, that's a time where if you're doing a bunch of these, and that'll also help me avoid those barbs as I'm going up gently. So I'm trying to avoid, I'm not, I'm trying to be sure I don't hit those, uh, <laughs> don't knock off these uh, wonderful little fruiting, fruiting 
uh, fruiting buds. What I wanted to do is kind of as an add-on is show you the difference in the types of leaves. So Santa Rosa, the just plum leaves are a lot smaller than let's say pear leaves or anything in the, uh, uh, any of these palm fruits uh, like apples and pears and um, frankly even like figs. Um, figs are not palm fruits, but you, you get the idea. So each of these leaves have kind of a, their own characteristics. These leaves are so huge and this, this lends itself to just being able to pull straight down on the stem. Again, you always want to be careful not to, uh, if you find any fruiting spurs, you want to make sure that you're not messing with the buds. So you keep your hand kind of nice and open and just kind of grab the leaves as you go down. So let me see if I can find a good example. So here's one where they're perfectly evenly spaced and as I just go down, see how the leaves just so easily pop off? And so on something like this, it wouldn't even make sense to spray. Um, I mean, you could spray, but it's, it's not gonna, it almost take, take as much time to just go do this by hand. Now, if you've got some really, yellowing leaves that just aren't coming off going on and just touching those with water would probably do it but a lot of these look really healthy and uh kind of vibrant still so doing these uh palm fruit apples pear um and even then doing figs it's just almost easier maybe easier to just pop them off by hand because they come off so easily toward the stem toward the base of the stem super fast super easy maybe took me seven eight minutes um there are all the leaves looking great this thing's ready to go to sleep Okay, so as you can see, we have about 90% of the foliage off of this tree. Um, you know, if you're gonna, you can get a little OCD like me and wanna go through and take off the rest of it, but this is enough foliage gone, so that way the tree is going to know that its system should be shutting down. It's not trying to produce a bunch of stuff through the leaves. And um, yeah, you probably may have noticed that I was going toward the, uh, toward the bark at some points or toward the stem uh, at some points and away from the stem. So it really just depends. You're gonna get a feel for how the leaves wanna go. If the leaves aren't popping off one way, then you can pop them off another. So if I stopped right now, after maybe 15 minutes on this tree, I'd be totally fine. Now, and you would be fine too, but I feel like I'm a little OCD sometimes and I like wanna go through and just take all these leaves off, especially as there's a bunch. I feel like each time I walk around this thing, I'm finding little leaves that are hanging on, but. You know, a lot of these are, are kind of already turning color and ready to go. So um, this this should do a lot of what we we're trying to do to just mellow out the um, mellow out the, the, the like the production part of this tree where it, it's the systems are again all shutting. See, OK, perfect example. See this one? The, I want to pull this leaf this way, but it isn't going. So I'm going to just pull it that way. See, even though we have this little bit of a stem left, that one popped off, that popped off. Um, I want you to see how this kind of just depends on the leaf. So see what your tree is telling you. Um, I also had to go a little bit more slowly on this because I was getting nailed by those crazy, man, there's like these barbs are just sharp. So you come through here and it's like, ah, ah. Look at the little spikes on here, my goodness. Um, I think I may have even hit that one. Here's another one. There's like a, she, as you tr see, this tree is beautifully defoliated and is going to now, uh, especially as the weather cools down, it's like 75 degrees right now. But as the weather cools, especially, it's going to tell this tree to go dormant. Um, it's so funny. I usually think a tree looks so healthy when it's got full, full of leaves and full of fruit. But it depends on the time of year that it is. Third week of January, this thing has to have its leaves off so it can go dormant um, here in Southern California. And so uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. Um, we'll come back, maybe do an update video on this specific tree. I've done it for the rest of the trees in the orchard here. But uh, we'll check in in the spring and see how we're doing, see how the fruit production is. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more.